Welcome to the Ladies Talk Show. This is your host, Leah Richheimer. We are right in the middle of really learning. We're doing deep introspection and deep work to have the best, closest marriage ever. We are on chapter 11, Getting to Harmony in Marriage Secrets, page 269. Here we go. Lumps under the rug. Life rushes by at a dizzying speed. We race from one thing to the next and barely have time to upload the paperwork or notes from the one event before gathering up the stuff we need for our next event, a next appointment. Our phones are beeping, our emails are backlogged, the pile of invitations waiting for a reply grows day by day, and dare I even mention the bills or insurance forms crying out for our attention. This is making me stressed just reading this. Okay. <laughs> and meanwhile, the crossfire from our loved ones comes at us at a fast and fur- comes at us fast and furiously. This one needs something from us, the other one has a bold complaint, and that one is mad at us about something else altogether. It's a modern miracle that we can make it to the safety of our pillow each night. It feels like we are consummate victims to the vagarities of life's ups and downs, and mostly at the effects of other people's flawed behavior. Why do we get so disproportionately aggravated when someone else leaves the refrigerator door slightly ajar or forgets to turn off the car lights, killing the battery? And why is it that a teenager can forget to put one dish in the sink and we clench our teeth while a grandchild can do almost anything and get away with it? Or a guest rumples the fancy towels and we nonchalantly straighten them, yet when our husband rumples them, we get annoyed. Why is it so much easier to make allowances for ourselves, but we get so irritated when when someone else airs? Are we inherently petty creatures that spend our time watching and waiting for others to mess up? Part of the issue is that we carry around so many grudges from other slights that the person has done to us. It may not be that rumpling the towels bothers us so much. It's just that he never listens to what we ask him to do in so many other circumstances. So this one incident adds to the heap. It's hard to let our husbands off the hook when they do something to annoy us. Even if they apologize, we often still resent what they did and find it almost impossible to move on. And no matter how sincere their apology, there's always a part of us that feels they didn't really mean it, that they're just saying sorry to get it over with. Not only that, deep down, we are sure they're just going to do exact the exact same thing again next time. They didn't really learn their lesson. But often there's no apology at all, no hope of getting one, and we are left with this flare-up of anger every time we think back on that incident. A clean slate. I'm going to read this one section, and then we're going to take questions. Get your questions ready, ladies. There are so many unresolved conflicts in a marriage that at any given time that it's hard to imagine that we could ever have a clean slate. There's the time our husband embarrassed us in public that we just can't let go of. There's the fact that we constantly remind him of how much it bothers us that he checks his email while pretending to listen to us and he continues to do so. And the tension from the heated debate about where to go for Yentev seems to linger in every subsequent interaction. Unfortunately, with so many unsettled issues, it seems impossible to know where to even begin. On top of that, tackling these issues seems like far more effort than we can muster in the middle of a harried life. We never seem to get that mystical state of harmony in our lives if that state really even exists. We are forever waiting for things to calm down so we can finally take stock of ourselves and straighten out all of the misunderstandings and petty conflicts that marriage and that marriage and a household engender. We have every intention of discussing and resolving the latest incident, but often we never quite get around to it. And here's the rub. We never really let go of it either. It's no wonder that we walk around with a grudge list a mile long. Not only are we upset about the current blatant offenses to our relationship, we also carry around issues from years ago. It's not that we're malicious people looking to make our husbands wrong. It's just that the lack of knowledge and perhaps motivation of how to clean our slate keeps us from doing so. So how do we get that feeling of resentment out of our hearts so we can move on? How do we do the mental gymnastics necessary to just let it go? It doesn't even seem possible to to get to a place of harmony. So why should we even try? The bottom line is we are constantly sweeping things under the rug and then wonder why we are always tripping over lumps. Nothing gets resolved and the buildup keeps getting bigger, making it feel even more impossible to ever attain a clean slate. And yet a clean slate is the only place where harmony can really flourish. It turns out that the lumps under the rug make it simply impossible to dance. Okay, woo! 
<laughs> this is about resentment, ladies. You guys wanted to get your resentment over? We're going to do it right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great chapter. Okay. Um, so Shauna's asking, what if I'm too resentful to even want to let go of my resentments? I feel so hurt from all the years of little resentments that have added up. Wow. Okay. I hear it. Um, the basic answer to that is, is strap your bootstraps on or whatever. How does that thing go? Stra put your boots, pull up your bootstraps or buckle up your bootstraps. Somebody, <laughs> like, whatever it is. Strap Anyhow, them up, what whatever it is. <laughs> button it up. Okay. Get, you know, strap your seatbelt on whatever. Get, here is your opportunity to actually be the greatest you you can be. Try again. Like if you knew, if you were going to put in a whole lot of effort and you know it was going to fail, right? Because you tried this 10 times before, 20 times or 20 years before, you know, you've been trying this, nothing's working. So I, I hear there's resentment. There's like, how, do, how why should I even bother? But if you knew there was a guaranteed way to get on the other side of these resentments, obviously you're a human being, you're going to say, okay, I'm doing it. You know, there we go. So, so um we're going to go through step by step how to get over those resentments. And I promise you, you're going to see this from a different light. So just sit, ste sit, sit steady, sit still, strap your boots on, <laughs> and, let, and we'll get going. We'll, we're going to explain to you exactly how to do that. Okay. Just okay. get okay. Right. Is the main thing. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so Shauna has to keep watching. Um, <laughs> Abigail asks, my husband is so fragile. And anytime I try to bring something up, he takes it so personally. I've tried communicating nicely the way you teach in your book, but he still takes everything personally. How can I get him to toughen up and take it like a man? Very good. I wouldn't ask him to tough it up and, and take it like a man. I would say, how come, you know, when I share anything with you, you get upset? And put your duct tape on, you know, just you know, listen. Why? You know, what is what is behind it? I, I try not to do it harshly. I try and do it softly. I try and do it nicely or whatever. But I feel like you always feel attacked or like on the defensive or whatever. And I really, as your wife, I feel like my job is to, you know, have great communication with you and to connect with you deeply and to feel close to you or whatever. But whenever I say anything that maybe is a little off cover, what am I doing that is causing you to to be defensive and to be sensitive and to push away. If it's not something I, I'm doing, you know, first of all, what am I doing and how can I better it? How can I do better? But also if it's not something I'm doing, what is it? What it, Were you like, was your head chopped off when you were a little kid? And anytime you tried to share with somebody or hear with somebody or people blasted you and whatever, what is it? You know, maybe you're just born that way that's hypersensitive. But I want to have the ability to share with you what's going on with me, what I'm feeling. You know, sometimes that might come out as criticism. So maybe I can curtail that better or say it better. But I want you to tell me what you need from me so that we can have better, deeper conversations about stuff like that. And put put take the problem and put it in his lap and, and see, you know, can he can he resolve this for you in a way that it works for both of you? And that's what you're going after. And if he says, you know, you're you you speak in a harsh tone and you're like, really? Really? And you really think you don't speak in a harsh tone, say. I really don't think I speak in a harsh tone. I'm going to do whatever I can not to speak in a harsh, harsh tone. I'm going to start my senses, sentences with, is it possible? <laughs> okay, that's the key words that we use here. Is it possible? Or, um, you know, I, I give you full 100% permission when you when you feel like I'm coming at you or uh, uh, when you're feeling defensive or you feel like I'm not saying it softly enough or I'm saying it harsh or I'm being me, whatever, I it's not only I give you permission, I'm requesting you in a huge way. Please point it to, out to me at the exact time. And then you yourself ask him, say, you know, I was really kind of upset how you um, handled, um, uh, you know, uh, how you this hung up the phone on me before, you know, I, I know you didn't mean to, but it felt like you were hanging up on me, even though you, you were in a rush and had to get off, you know, and now you're getting it all upset and defensive. So you as the wife can say, I want to tell you something. I don't want you to get defensive or whatever, but I need to communicate it to you. How come you got off the phone so abruptly? It made me feel hurt that you hung up on me. And the husband will say, you know, and, and and you can say, did I say that okay to you? Did I express that in a way that was too harsh? Did I, 
handle this better than I had in the past? Am I improving in this area? Take full responsibility for it. And God willing, you'll have better success. Okay, good going, guys. Hey, okay. great. Okay, so Yochavet asks, how do we know when to clean the lumps and when to be mavater? Oh, it's a great question. So um, the first go-to is always to see if you can mavater. <laughs> right. So, you know yourself better than anybody else. So see if you can say, you know, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to say to myself, OK, my husband said this kind of a little bit of a mean comment to me. Am I able to let it go? No, it's still upsetting. OK, maybe I should mention to him. Well, hold on. Is there any other possible of way of me of my trying? Is there any other possible way? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I feel really bad because I turned the stove on on Yontif. And um, I didn't mean to, whatever, my hand just went to it. And I've been feeling badly about it. Like, a hello, I, I knew you couldn't start a flame on, on a yantif or whatever. And I did it. And I've been, you know, I gave tzedakah because I felt badly about it. And I said, I'm sorry to Hashem. You know what? Maybe I can forgive my husband for that mean comment. If I think about the fact, if I am mevatar to my husband, Hashem will mevatar to me. Now, this is a weird science and I'm not, you ask your local Orthodox Rob, this is like above my pay scale, everything I'm saying, but I'm just saying if it's, if, if, if you can in your own heart and mind um, be, make more shalom in your marriage by thinking of ways that you can um, uh, 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 spiritually or psychologically help you to forgive somebody for something that is, that's mutter, that's completely mutter. They say that God himself, will, if you mavater, Hashem will mavater you on things that you have done. So it's probably not that specific. I don't think I never asked that Shaila. So ask the Shaila for me. So I don't want to get, say the wrong thing, but if you think of that, like Hashem will maybe just say, I know for sure you could say, Hashem will forgive me for something. I don't know what, he, but he'll forgive me for something I need forgiveness for if I forgive my husband and Mavata without talking, bringing it up and talking about it. So if that helps you, gazantate. If if you can't do that, if you find, no, I'm going to keep thinking about it. And every time, you know, we're at the, with those people that he embarrassed me in front of, you know, I'm going to feel awkward. I really have to, and, and fearful that he's going to say it again. I really have to say something. So that's how you know the difference. And then your most important thing is you have to think about how you can communicate it to your husband in a way that doesn't make him uh, um, defensive. Because if you, it's sometimes enjoyable to say, yeah. It's wrong. You know, what are you, you know, you, you're bad and wrong and, you know, whatever. And, you know, there's a certain satisfaction in that. I won't lie. Okay. But it's zero effective. <laughs> you know, it's like it totally is going to backfire on you. It's totally not going to work. He's going to do it again. It's you're going to have suffer worse because now you're doubly mad because he did it this time and he did it next time. So it's a failed a methodology. But if you think, you know, he did this, he embarrassed me in public. We are going to go see these people, those people again this Shabbos. So I do really feel like I have to say something. What can I say that will have him get it? Um, if I say, how would you like it if I did that to you? You know, all of that stuff, zero cheese at the end of, you know, go, go down a dark, it's a mouse going down a dark tunnel with zero cheese at the end. Okay. Um, but if I think, if you think about it, you think, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, I've got it. You know, I, I just want you to know, you know, I don't want to make a big mountain out of a molehill. But last week when you told me, you know, that I really looked horrible in that outfit. Ha, huh? I hope your husband, nobody's feeling hearing that. But anyway, you know, when you said that in front of everybody, it kind of made me feel uncomfortable, a little embarrassed. So I, I, I don't want to make a federal case out of it. But I'm just saying when we go there, this Shabbos, if you don't mind being super, super careful in what you say. You know, something like that, something soft, you know, that you know that you can hear. Or you could even do a sandwich, you know, which is good things, uh, criticism, uh, good thing, you know. So the good thing is, you know, you're usually so thoughtful of everything. You made this one mistake last week and said this thing. Do you mind, you know, um, not being careful this week? And by the way, you know, I, I feel like so nervy to say that to you because you're always so thoughtful. Something like that. A sandwich. Good thing. Good thing. Two compliments on the side in the, in, in the middle. You do that. So very, very good questions, ladies. Okay, go ahead, Gila. What you got for me? Okay, so Tova asks, my life is so busy. I don't have... I don't have the emotional energy to do this process of cleaning the lumps. It's much more tempting to just fake it till I make it. Is this unhealthy? Um, I don't know about unhealthy, but it doesn't seem like it's going to really help you. It seems like you're carrying all this stuff, you know, like we all do. We all carry this resentment from he did this and he did that, and whatever. And I tell you can man it like it's, it's so crazy. We have all this stuff under our, our, our rugs that are, our, our, 
relationship feels very messy. And when you start doing the process of coming to harmony and, you know, I'm going to teach you how to do that uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. But when you, when you start working on that, you realize the stuff that is keeping you apart and, and causing lack of closeness and whatever, you know, we think of it like there's a hundred things, but there's actually one category over here, a category. There's like three things and four things and this incident and that thing, whatever. There's really a finite number. I cannot tell you how many women have told me that, that, that when they, they come to Harmony, they're so shocked how close they really were to Harmony and they've spent the last eight years lacking Harmony because he did something or she did something or an incident happened or somebody got ill and it wasn't handled well. And they, you know, they never, they never got back to themselves the way they, they might have. So um, that's the good news is that, um, uh, you know, it, there is an end to it. Um, and you, you know, you have to keep sweeping out the stuff under the rug. It's not like he, he's never going to do anything that's going to annoy you or hurt you ever again. But then, then you're just cleaning up current messes rather than cleaning up years of resentment. But to answer your question about the fact that, you know, should you just leave it? Is that unhealthy and fake it till you make it? I hear that it's more trouble and more work to clean the lumps under the rug. But once you do that, there's a closeness that's available no other way because your resentments are gone. Um, so um, I hear you. I realize it's a mountain I'm telling you to climb up. Okay, I know that's no joke. But um, bolster yourself. Look, it's you know if it if it's coming on Pesach or it's you know you're somebody's birthday, or you have a wedding coming up. You can leave this for now. Don't you don't have to tack this this minute. But, you know, say, OK, after the, 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 the wedding or after Yantif or after whatever, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to really take care of this. And I'm going to walk you through step by step. This is not a scary mystery. If you want a deeper cut, you know, you can get marriage secrets yourself and um, and, and go through uh, the, the uh, overcoming the resentments uh, uh, simultaneous to working with this with me on uh, the ladies talk show. OK, great questions. OK, go ahead, Gila. Galia asks. How do we get over the same type of resentment that occurs again and again? Every time my husband leaves the house without a care in the world, I feel a ping in my chest because I wish I could just walk out of the house like that. But I take care of the home and our children. He doesn't say goodbye is what he's, she's upset about? I'm not no, sure. I think that it's just she's stuck in motherhood and I have to leave with this kid's shoe and don't forget that backpack and that sippy cup. And he could just walk out with his keys in his hand. So it's a little finding out what her role is type of thing. <laughs> right, right. I hear. Um, gosh, gosh, it's a, that's such a deep question because um, it's uh, he has to go out and fight dragons and wear, you know, wear a suit and deal with the outside world that, you know, on the outside, everything is pulling away from a man, you know, it's like his boss tells him to do something and doesn't appreciate it and then insults him for the five things. He did a hundred things right. And he only hears about the five things he did wrong in the outside world. When you step outside of the, tra the, the transom of your door and you're outside, everything, you know, is, is, is moves away from you. Goodness, money you have to go after and goodness and, and you know, you have to run after learning tour. You have to you have to work for it. Everything is going away from you. It's not pouring into you. And when a man sets foot inside his home, everything should be coming towards him. A glass of water, a warm smile, a welcome, a dad's home, you know, all of that. So when he's walking out the door, you need to shift your mindset that he's gone out, he's put on his armor, he's put on his shield, he's got a sword, and there's a dragon behind every bush ready to attack him. <laughs> and like, good, 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 you know, good, good on you that you get to stay in the safety and the comfort of your own home. Yes, you have to remember the diaper bag and the, you know, uh, this one needs a Band-Aid and the Band-Aid is falling off and, you know, whatever. Before you leave the house, you have to make sure that everything's turned off and that, you know, whatever. I, I get it. I get it. But you have different roles. And... Um, there's a um, whole movement in society in the Western culture that the you know the roles should be equal and they should be whatever and it, it's just not true. Um, and I'm not an anti-feminist because we b believe me, they, it did a lot for women's rights or whatever. But there was casualties of war and there were a lot of casualties. And one of them was our mindset 
that it's fine to have our different roles. And um, if you're the one who's going out working and he's the one staying at home or he's the, you know, he's learning or something like that, you know, there's, there's different roles, but to have, you know, if you're sitting there saying you resent when he leaves the house, when he can just have freedom, I think that's a misunderstanding of what's really going on. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the most important thing to, for you to do in your mental shift is to just think of him as going out and fighting dragons. And I think that will help you to not resent him and just to send him out and say, good luck. <laughs> you know, when he's leaving, realize he's going into a dangerous zone. Um, and uh, hopefully that'll help you. Okay. Hatzlacha. Go, email me back and let me know if if that if that helped. Okay, good. Okay. What what you got, Gila? Okay. Um, Han is asking, what's the balance between knowing when to communicate things and when it's disrespecting him? Using your example, if I feel he's on his phone too much, isn't it disrespectful to tell him this? Isn't it better to work on my resentment rather than disrespecting him by communicating my issue? It's a good question. There's always a balance. If you are sitting there with naggy wife and bossy wife and telling him left, right, and center, whatever, then yeah, like, hello, <laughs> get your duct tape out, you know. Um, if, on the other hand, you're respectful of him and you honor him and you take care of him and you whatever, and then this something comes up, you know, he's on the phone or whatever, you know, you cut, you can have the space to say to him, you know, Listen, I know you've got so much business you're taking care of or whatever. Can we have like a window of a half an hour or an hour or whatever, or during dinner, dinner hour or during, you know, whatever you, you work it out, what works for you guys and say, you know, where it's just no text, no, email, no, no electronic devices. It might mean that you have to give up your electronic devices, right? When all the babysitters are, you're trying to get them for, uh, you know, uh, what, and then you, they can't reach you and they say, oh, I could, I could have babysit if you had picked up the phone <laughs> or whatever it is, you know, it's not such an easy, easy thing. But if you do want his full attention, you know, again, if in a general state of the marriage, you are being very um, supportive and respectful and control uh, giving him con the control that he desperately needs and you're you're doing that then these kind of com comments are of course you you need to be able to share what your needs are it's, that's it it's good it's a good question okay. um aviva is asking my husband feels resentful of me for feeling resentful of him he feels he's always trying to make me happy yet i still get resentful of him and it turns and in turn he feels resentful <laughs> how do we stop this cycle in other words, I guess he feels like she's never happy with what he's doing. And so then resentment on resentment. Right. Oh, it's a competition war of who, who can, you know, it's that's a sad. Um, hmm. I guess you just have to be the one to break the cycle and you need to come to him and say, you know, we're building and building and building on each other and it's not productive you know, I, I was thinking of, I want to brainstorm with you on ways to solve this. And one of the things I was thinking is, you know, maybe um, uh, we write our resentments down on a, on a piece of paper, a, a, on a journal or something, rather than sharing them with each other and waiting. We have to wait 24 hours or we have to wait one week or we, whatever, you know, make it up, get creative and say, you know, um, uh, if after 24 hours, you still feel that it's an important issue, then you bring it up to the other person. So maybe something like that. I, I, to be honest with you, Gila, I think this is a much deeper question. There's other stuff going on that um, I'm not quite privy to. So I'm not sure what's going on, but there seems to be, you know, potentially some kind of a competition situation going on or some kind of a, you know, what happens when, when a couple meets, you know, they they're, they want to marry each other, you know, they, they, they meet their Bashar and the, the whole thing that's going on in their head is they want to be able to, um, uh, um, do for the other person like wow what else can i do can i make you cookies can i this could you know and they're always you know what can i give you what can i give you what else can i give you what else can I? and both of them are like each other that and then you know a week or two or three or four after marriage it's like what can i get from you not what can i give what can i get and when it turns into that you know, what can I get? Actually, I have a joke about this. When the wife wants to know what she can get from her husband and the husband wants to know what he gets from his wife, you end up with a get. So, so you know, this, this is very, very crucial. So what, you know, and this is just taken from Revolbi, you know, if you have a sense that you're just unsatisfied or upset or something like that, the first thing you should do is give. 
what can I do for them? Uh, you know, like you, you're, you're feeling like you're not, you're not getting enough. Uh, can I get you a cup of coffee? Oh, um, uh, you know, he, 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 um, let me think. Um, oh, I, I see he left his sneakers on the back porch cause they had mud all over them. I'm going to clean the mud off for him. Look for a act of giving that you can do for your husband. And that, that, will shift your own thinking and it will shift your husband's thinking. So that's the way out of the rut that you're in. But again, there's deeper things that I don't know. I'm just, I'm just surmising, but anybody else, if you're having resentment, start doing for your husband and you will see it, it shifts your own uh, attitude towards it. And your it, it, it brings a closeness. It, it's shocking how quickly things turn around when you start looking what you can give to him. Okay. Great question. What you get? Hey, great answer. Okay. Panina's asking, I try to communicate my feelings, but my husband has zero empathy or understanding of my needs. Is the only remedy to speak to him about it, or will I get the same healing by talking to a friend about it? Uh, about something she's resentful of him about? Um, just when she wants to communicate her feelings, she doesn't feel like he's giving what she needs by not understanding her needs. So she wants to know if she can get healed by, t I, I'm wondering if it's between them that she needs to talk about or not, because if it's about their own personal issue, then why should she go to her friend about it? It's Lush and Hara. Thank you. Okay. And what else? And if it's just her own thing, like she's venting about her children or something, a finite or whatever it is, then I don't know what right. her, I don't know what right. her Okay. So let's is. assume, let's, let's look at both scenarios. If it's something about her husband to talk to her girlfriend about it is Lush and Hara. Unless, her girlfriend is a wise Rebitson and whatever. And, and you, you have to pick your confidence very carefully because you have some friends who say, I can't believe your husband did that. That's disgusting. You know, that's going to be very detrimental to your relationship. Or you'll have a friend who says, oh, I'm sorry. I, I can hear that would be hurtful. But, you know, maybe he was just in a bad mood that day. You know, you have somebody, people who are looking for shalom in, in you know, so if you have somebody like that, then that's a bigger heter to to be able to discuss issues about your husband. But if it's an, other issues, by all means, if you are upset because the principal called the kid in from school and because your car got banged up and whatever, share with your friends, your girlfriends, your sisters, your mother, everybody, your daughters, whatever, share it with everybody else so that you don't burden your husband with it. It's a gavaldic, gavaldic um, uh, way to go. Um, and then when you get to talk to him about it, you're, the steam is let out of it a little bit. You know what I mean? You're not, you know, let the, let the anger go everywhere else. And again, what that means is you have to be there for your girlfriend. You're in the middle of thing. You finally have a chance. You sit down to your cup of coffee and your crossword puzzle or whatever. If anyone takes these breaks, they sh you should if you don't. But anyway, you're just about to relax and your girlfriend calls and she's all upset about something. And she's the one who listened to you the other day talk about the things you were upset about. Guess what? You are putting your cup of coffee aside, letting it get cold, and you're being there for your girlfriend. So it is an investment, but it's very, very well worth it. Um, we know from the Torah, it says, make yourself a friend, um, uh, pay for a friend, you know, buy yourself a friend. Um, friends are seen as very, very crucial in, in uh, Klai Israel, in, in, in um, Armasora. Um, and, uh, you know, but it, it means they're there for you. They let off steam. So you don't hurt, burden your husband too much. And it means you have to be there for them when they need you. Okay. Excellent questions. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Miriam is asking, I'm such a people pleaser, especially when it comes to my husband. I don't hold my husband accountable for much. And in turn, I don't get resentful, which is great, but my husband takes advantage of this, unfortunately. As a result, I am overworked, overtired, and burned out from carrying too much responsibility. My mother has commented on this multiple times, and it's embarrassing for me. What do you suggest? Stop talking to her mother. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, I asked a guttle, what's the number one problem with shell and bias these days? Like, what's going on? Why are we in crisis with shell and bias? And he said, it's, the, uh, and no, and I asked, why do we have such a high divorce rate th these days? What has happened? Claudia Sorrell never used to have a divorce rate like this. And it's it's gone crazy. And he said, it's in-laws. That the mothers and the mothers-in-laws and the fathers and fathers-in-laws are interfering in a, such a detrimental way that that's causing it. I, I was shocked, blown away, shocked. It's such a horrible thing. I mean, in other words, if anything could be avoided, 
faster than that. You know, we got to, we got to fix this. And if you're a mother or father-in-law, you know, the old thing is saying, <clears throat> put, close the mouth and open the pocketbook, you know, just, just stay out of it. And, and her giving her opinion. I mean, I'm just, I'm very upset and shocked. And the, the, you know, she trusts her mother and her mother, her mother should not be instigating Shalom Bayes problems in the marriage. It's, it's horrible. Now, like, well, she's just saying the truth. No, she has no right to say the truth. It's better that she lie. It's better that she would say, oh, he's such a wonderful husband when she's secretly thinking than whatever. I, look, I'm not advocating lying. I'm getting off on a kind of a tangent, but I'm just saying that, um, yeah, yeah, I'm just very upset at the mother. At the mother. Um, okay, but back to the main issue. Let's say that didn't happen with the mother. Um, and the main issue about um, her husband, I, I completely even forgot. So the, the main issue is that she so doesn't usually, she doesn't usually feel resentful and she's a people pleaser, but because she became oh, such a her husband, takes her advantage. husband takes advantage. Right. So I'm not sure how true that is. In other words, she's obviously getting something. If she's always been a people pleaser, she's get pe people pleasers get something out of it, being people pleaser. People think well of them. People feel close to them. People depend on them. They maybe feel superior to the people, so they feel important. I don't know, but there's juice there. There's some kind of juice there. So I don't know that necessarily being a people pleaser is a bad thing. Um, and you know, the only way it is bad is if she herself felt. Uh, like her husband was taking advantage of her, which she may never have felt if her mother hadn't pointed that out. But anyway, let's just say she did feel it herself that her husband had taken advantage of her. But well, she is what, saying that she feels very overworked and overtired and burnt out. Welcome to the club. Like, is anyone, anyone listening today, do you feel that you are completely relaxed and you had a fun day having some ice cream by the river? And, and no, we're all overworked and over whatever. That has nothing to do. That's like a side issue. But anyways, back to this is that if she is feeling, you know, that that her husband is taking advantage of her, what does a woman do in any scenario if she feels um, she has an issue and she feels taken advantage of her? She, she doesn't feel connected with her husband. What does she do? She communicates with them. She sits down and she says, you know, I'm kind of a people pleaser and I want to please you. My whole life goal is to please you. But I'm also feeling that um, because I'm such a people pleaser and so nice or whatever, that sometimes instead of like, you know, getting in, getting yourself a, 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 a spritzer out of the fridge, you'll say, oh, can you grab me a spritzer out of the fridge? And I'll just do it because I want you to be happy and pleasing. But it makes me feel like, um, you know, like I'm overworked or whatever, like I'm not understood. Like I'll sit there and I'll say, oh, I had such a hard day and this kid had to be driven there and we got there and it was the wrong place and we had to drive to another location. You know, I'll tell you all the problems that happened that day. And then you'll still ask me to go get you a spritzer. And it just makes me feel like, like not heard or like you're not you don't get me you know like that you just have a nice conversation about it now if you are overworked and over whatever like we all are you need to find a hobby or you need to find a way to get yourself some down rest uh, down uh, some down rest down time <laughs> some rest um you know, there is the Godolim say that you need to have space in your life. If you are accomplishing a lot, you still need to make time for social communication with somebody, just a schmooze. You need to make time for, for learning. You need to make time for meals. You know, don't eat while you're eating and doing something else. <laughs> you know, take yourself 10 minutes, 15 minutes, a half an hour. Just take take some time for yourself. And, and we all should do that, myself included. I get We all get wrapped up in a million different things. So Baruch Hashem, you should be benched with this. Okay. Okay. All right. Let me just think of the homework. Mm. One time this week, have a communication with your husband that you, um, uh, uh, to resolve a, well, we're going to get to how to resolve resentment. So just for now, when you are, something is bothering you, do some homework. Sit down with a piece of paper and think of the five things you could say to your husband that would work. You can, if you want, you can start with those, the things like, I'm going to tell him he should jump in a lake. And you can start with the mad things if you want and then cross them out after. And don't let anyone see them. And then write the things that you think will work. Like I was, you know, last week when we were at the place, I'm using that same example, you know, and you said this embarrassing thing, I'd like you to not do it next time. You know, so one time you're coming, you're coming up with a way to 
patch up and how to communicate with your husband in a way that patches up something that you're resentful about or you could be resentful about uh, if, if it was left un, uh, taken care of. Okay, that's the homework. This is Leah Richheimer. We'll see you next week.